so good morning good afternoon and good evening world over and entire globe all our brothers and sisters in different countries different time zones wherever you are we extend a very hearty welcome to all of you for joining for this particular webinar today we have got a very special webinar which we are starting at 12:30 100 hours that is 12 o'clock 30 minutes past indian standard time that is afternoon in india and of course we are in different time zones and this is going to be because everybody is talking about when you are talking about making education relevant series and today we have got 105th program of this particular webinar which we started on the world environment day on 5th of june we have got very distinguished guest to whom i will be introducing and handing over to all of you in a little while but meanwhile let me just share because every day we get new people we get new audience we get new participants and i hope you are taking care of your health your wellness wherever you are world over you are looking after not only yourself your family your neighbors your community and everybody who ever is directly or indirectly in touch with you ladies and gentlemen today before i hand over i will show you couple of slides but today's distinguished guest as per the afternoon indian standard time 12:30 we have got dr subramanya us noor sahab who is the founder chairman and the ceo aqua craft projects private limited and he is joining us live from mumbai but before i hand over to my distinguished guest let us share a couple of slides so that we all are on the common frequency we know what is the purpose of this program why are we having this series what are we achieving through this series so these are the different time zones world over you all are in different countries different places different cities different districts so we extend your very warm welcome wherever you are and you are joining us for this particular program thanks for being with us our chamber international chamber for service industry icsi which is operational since 1994 in india from 1994 to 2003 to get the confluence of all the non resident indians from world over there used to be initially punjabi parvasi divas and 2003 the then honorable prime minister of india he gave the birth and he gave the vision and he gave the new strategy let's start with bhartiya parvasi divas so punjabi parvasi divas being celebrated on one of the most auspicious occasion and festival of punjab that is called lohri that is on 13th of january so the honorable then prime minister of india in 2003 he told let's have bhartiya parvasi divas on 9th of january because what could have been more relevant pious and appropriate because mahatma gandhi ji came from south africa to india as nri on 9th of january and that was the birth in 2003 so at present our chamber is a link between 30 million non resident indians world over all the leading corporate houses and of course with the government interface where we keep giving the policies strategies white papers action plan road maps from time to time to the government during lockdown we all know the thought processes are affected business is affected physical and mental health is affected and the main part of the universe is education is deeply affected when we talk about education at present children are with their parents they are not in a position to go to schools colleges universities institutions polytechnics iti skill development centers wherever they were going earlier so this is the most opportune time whenever there is some difficulty because necessity is the mother of invention some new things emerge some new things come up during the financial crisis of 2008 you had uber you had ola you had airbnb you had many new ventures which had come at that point of time so at this point of time when children are with their parents at their respective residences this is the most opportune time all parents are requested kindly give some valuable inputs to your children how to save every drop of water at your residence wherever you are using water how to save water and as far as india is concerned 
we believe in vasudev kutumbakam one world one love one family all of us together ladies and gentlemen there's a new education policy which has come in india our deepest and heartiest gratitudes and regards and congratulations to the honorable prime minister of india shri narendra modi ji and also to dr ramesh pokhrial nishank the honorable education minister of india and his entire team whether in the school education or in higher education or in technical education or in vocational education what a new wonderful policy which is so practical once it gets implemented puna bharat vishv guru banega ise koi nahi rok sakta now what is the need of the rs the policy is coming we got to adopt it in totality and where the 6% of the gdp to be spent on the education sector our chamber international chamber for service industry through its own means from morning till evening like you have got this special program we have got a couple of programs we are reaching across the east and the west and the north and the south and the central part of the universe in the different continents we start early in the morning at 9 o'clock and we finish at 9 pm our teams in different countries and from india we have got a live beaming being done and i'm so happy we reach out to mongolia we reach out to central asia we reach out to middle east we reach out to latin america we reach out to couple of other countries world over and the evening program which we organize every day at 7 pm we got lots of people from europe also and at this point of time we have got lots of friends from world over including from australia new zealand fiji and couple of other places and of course asean myanmar cambodia laos singapore malaysia thailand indonesia philippines brunei vietnam all the countries we are so grateful to them our chamber is also focusing on women empowerment because the girls and it's so rightly said when you educate a boy you educate single person but when you educate female when you educate girl child you educate next seven generations because she is the one who is going to carry the subsequent generations and why we started this series on 5th of june because 5th of june is the world environment day jal hi jeevan hai jal ka sanrakshan bahut zaruri hai the present government has taken lot of innovative steps i am thankful to the honorable water resources minister union minister government of india he was very kind to be with us on 12th of august just few days back today is 18th on 12th he was with us because it was world youth day and we had the confluence of 100000 youth from the world over from 150 countries as a part of the program and some of the children they addressed their concern and they gave their perspective and their views and their inputs and they gave some innovative creative ideas how the water can be saved so if we want to make education relevant it should not be bookish it should not be rote learning it should not be theoretical it has to be practical day to day life so ladies and gentlemen parents you are requested at this point of time kindly teach your children share your vision and let them also share their vision with you how the water can be saved at your residence monday to friday we have got a complete pure program with you making education relevant where we talk about innovative pedagogies and creativity and cognitives and new skills and competencies but that comes then comes saturday morning every saturday morning 9:30 we get 500 million plus buddhist followers from the world over we get international speakers we are thankful to venerable dr dhamapiya ji who is the international buddhist confederation secretary general who is getting the international expertise for us every saturday morning come saturday evening thankful to ministry of ayush we have got ayurveda for the global wellness your yoga meditation naturopathy nutrition organic farming and what you eat is your thought process and whatever you think that gets into your system and your positive thoughts are very very important because in a day more than 60000 they criss cross your body and your mind every day ladies and gentlemen come sunday morning 
what a beautiful morning i'm so grateful to all of you we have just finished saturday and from saturday we have come on sunday and when we come on sunday morning at 9:30 under the life management skills and making education relevant we just finished 18 chapters of shrimad bhagavad gita what is the relevance of shrimad bhagavad gita in today's education system and now we are moving vidya se adhyatam vidya ki aur where we are covering 10 main upanishad of india and there comes the professor satendra dhiman from woodbury university burbank california live from united states every sunday morning at 9:30 comes sunday evening at 5 pm you get the experts from the asean region all the 10 countries fastest growing economy very vibrant imagine what all wonders they are doing on this planet we just had on this sunday today is tuesday sunday we had the lady the hr strategist from vietnam who spoke to us from ho chi minh city and she gave us the new dimensions and new pedagogies and andragogies and what all is happening in vietnam as far as the development process is concerned and how they have taken care of the new innovative strategies for the development i'm thankful to my president in thailand and i'm also thankful to my future president from malaysia for joining us this afternoon for this particular webinar thank you very much every sunday evening 7 pm we come to the micro small and medium enterprise i'm grateful to ministry of msme government of india we have been moving in the corridors of that ministry for 3 years the honorable secretary the additional secretary entire team members of that ministry we gave the white paper action plan road map strategies innovation what all can be done and requested them that let us not focus only on manufacturing sector we got to get across to the services sector as well and i'm so grateful ladies and gentlemen the other day when the honorable prime minister gave the dole during this particular corona virus to the entire country the financial package and he gave the five verticals over there the finance minister of india shrimati nirmala sitaraman ji when she spoke about and she spoke about msme and she said wow factor that was she said here onward the manufacturing and services sector will be taken at par we felt so happy that all the work which we had done over the years saw the daylight in the ministry of micro small and medium enterprise ladies and gentlemen morning till evening we have got the beaming we are trying to reach out the heart the spirit the mind the soul universal world over wherever our brothers and sisters are and we are trying to share what so best best can be done for youth empowerment women empowerment digital education creating school education innovative higher education practical vocational education skills and entrepreneurship moral and value based ancient vedic education from india so this is the last slide before i introduce you my esteemed guest and the distinguished guest of this afternoon all of us let's come together let's make education relevant it's a global confluence of educators motivators technocrats counselors and of course the corporate sector together ladies and gentlemen international chamber for service industry extends you a very warm welcome to be either a panelist or send your suggestions to us what can be done in education system how we can save every drop of the water how the water saving strategies can be implemented the best possible way in our day to day life you can send us either the email or you can send it the whatsapp whatever human mind can conceive and believe it can achieve that's what is the belief of our chamber icsi here is the warm welcome we extend a very hearty welcome to our distinguished guest swachh shri dr supramanya kusnoor sahab the founder and chairman and ceo aqua craft projects private limited it was a pleasure to meet him at the sustainable development goal ungc program of the unesco in mumbai in the recent past Aquacraft is the drinking water and sanitation partner of the GCNI Indian arm of the UNGC New York 
and has been recognized by the Economic Times as champion of sustainability, a strong proof of Dr. Subramania's commitment towards sustainability. He brings in rich experience of over 28 years in the BFSI, IT and public affairs spanning through both public and private sectors, domestically and internationally. He has a keen focus of serving the public with issues related to children welfare, drinking water and sanitation, public health, alternate energy, rural development, public administration, and international bilateral relations. He has traveled widely across India and particularly rural India because India still live in villages. He has a strong international exposure by virtue of having traveled extensively across the Middle East, Southeast Asia, Africa, and United States of America. He has received several awards and recognitions for his work. With these words, ladies and gentlemen, let me have a privilege to extend a very warm welcome to Dr. Subramanya Kusnur Sahab this afternoon. Hearty welcome to you. Pleasure to have you with us. You've got to unmute your mic, sir. You've got to unmute your mic. It's a pleasure to have you with us. And Thank now you, <laughs> the entire globe is yours. The audience is yours. We want to learn. We want to understand the best practices, whatsoever can be done in water saving so that the whole world somewhere can take this particular agenda seriously because there should not be a water crisis and there should not be a water disputes and there should not be a water misunderstanding by different countries and different continents in the coming times in the future. I also learned with the pleasure that your daughter who is studying in Canada, she's doing remarkable work at this point of time. Do share that vision also in between your conversation whenever you feel like so with these words, Doksha, the entire audience yours, the globe is yours, the world is yours, and you are ours. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Dr. Sharma, I'm humbled to be here, and uh, I'm lost for words of gratitude for your benevolence for having invited me here. Uh, humbly, I would want to share before we start everything. Uh, I will only share my experiences. I am nobody to teach anybody, but uh, we have learned something in the last 10 years of our existence that we started this business. And I would probably look towards taking you through that entire journey and uh, as well as share a couple of experiences, what we've gone through, a uh, few thoughts, few ideas, a uh, few suggestions and roadmap and collectively how all of us together can really look at addressing water and uh, make uh, not just India, but the world positive with water, which is essentially the elixir of life and the subject of today's discussion, where we say it's the core of sustainability. With a lot of activities that have been done over the last 74 years of independence in India, India has really evolved over to be a, not a developing country anymore, but it is more than developed and it is showing the way to the world in terms of addressing critical problems and crises. That essentially shows the resilience of the DNA of every Indian who not only resides in India, but has heart weeks for India. And how not just as a community, but also as an con entire country, maybe the politics, the social commitment, the fabric, the privilege, the underprivileged, all of them come together when there is a issue and when there's a challenge and the classic example of Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi Ji's clarion call when we were in COVID to do the banging of plates, lighting of lights, essentially shows what adversity in unity really means. India is already known for diversity in unity, but uh, unity in adversity is something which is uh, classic example which India has shown and the entire management of the crisis by the central government and the state government has today become a topic of discussion and a model for several countries to follow. A classic case and example is the Dharav Islam model in Mumbai, which uh, I mean, I don't know how many of you all know, but uh, there is a slum in the uh, uh, eastern parts of uh, Mumbai called as Dharavi 
which is the largest slum in Asia, and this corona pandemic was affected very badly. And today there is not even a single case of corona there. And please note that there is no single private toilet in a home in Dharavi. Everybody uses a community toilet. So the reason, the entire thing is the sheer resilience that Indians have and the capability of Indians to stand up to challenges and stand up to you know, calls made by relevant people, influencers and community leaders to come and address a particular situation. Time has now really come to address the most critical challenge, not just in India, but the world, which is water. What is water? Water is finally elixir of life. Tell me how many people can do without water. Okay, there might be some discussions where they say they fast for three or four days, but eventually water is needed to rehydrate yourself. Otherwise, the entire anatomy and the blood circulation, right from the heart to the brain, is directly proportional to the amount of water which is there in your body. And this also has a direct bearing on the water above you and water below the ground. So effectively, this water balance is very important. And what we call as water is wellness advocated through technology efficiently leading to resilience. The entire nomenclature of water, what was around um, a millennium ago and what is today has radically changed. The pandemic clearly shows that water is very, very important, not just in response, but in resilience and in resurgence. If you do not have water, you cannot wash hands, which is one of the most important factors today. You cannot use a community toilet or you cannot use a toilet in your home without having to flush after you use a toilet. And these are all natural phenomena that happens to a human being. There is no science or politics attached to it at all. These are all existential attributes and parameters that the human being is governed by irrespective of all other uh, affluences that affect a daily human being's basic life, economic life, and social life. So these actions demand the need of water. Your existence, the food you intake needs to be clean. It has to be cooked. You require water. You eat the food. You digest the food. You discard the food. It requires water. You need to stay clean. You need to stay um, you know, good, you need to stay well, you require water. So water is at the core of sustainability. Sustainability is a topic which has now been discussed and this can be debated several times over. Just to give you a small perspective of what we're going to be talking about in terms of experience, I would want to talk about a little bit of myself so that you know, we have a reference to the context in which we are going to extrapolate this particular discussion. and. Uh, as I told you, I'll be sharing my experiences and um, after the event, I would uh, request uh, all of you all to connect with the uh, chamber that Dr. Sharma has so beautifully built up and so beautifully curated. And it's a classic example of a multi-stakeholder inclusive platform which doesn't only talk about corporates but talks about the education which is a very critical factor and I'll come to this later in my uh, dissertation as well as uh, getting a government interface in terms of creating policies, evolving with the time, evolving with the new India, the new demography, the new world and the new challenges. Sir, you're doing a brilliant job and uh, I wish you all the very best and continue to do so and uh, offer platform to humble people like us also to contribute um, our humble might towards your entire success. So um, I have, um, I mean, by qualification, I am a science graduate with a specialization in electronic instrumentation and a post-graduation in computer software and applications. One of the few uh, Microsoft certified programmers earlier in the day in 90, early 1990s, uh, had a successful banking and financial services career. That's when I was introduced uh, to a, a war veteran from the US uh, in India and he had come to India and he said that I have a technology which is actually uh, can really help address the contamination problems that India is facing. I said, that's good, you met me and uh, it's encouraging, it's inspiring. And uh, he told me that why don't you just meet me in my hotel again before I leave? 
I would like to talk to you if you are interested. I said, no harm in meeting. I went and met him. And that's when I realized it was his 17th trip in 20 months. I said, if an American can come so often with such a great passion to come and say that I have a solution for your problems, then me as an Indian, I have a moral role at least to support him, if not do anything. That's when this entire journey started. I was introduced to him by a couple of interesting people. And um, I told uh, Dr. Sharma about this earlier on, but I uh, would not want to take names. They're all stalwarts. Uh, still, I still continue to remain humble. But uh, the entire thing started and my inquisitiveness about this technology uh, increased. And I told him that, you know, why don't you share some case studies and something that helps me understand more. Uh, though I am a science graduate, but my focus was majorly into, you know, electronic instrumentation. And that time we had tried to build an IoT of our own, much ahead of time, which is now the name of the game. But uh, nevertheless, uh, he said, and uh, he shared a lot of data, and I spent the rest whole afternoon with him before he went to the uh, back to the airport and dropped him back. I was very intrigued to understand that uh, that was almost uh, ten years ago. So we were 65 years after independence. Uh, still, I'm sorry to say that the challenges, not just in our country, over the world, drinking water is still a serious challenge. And especially in, uh, even in the US. So that's what he told me. So all these things uh, put together, we understood. And uh, I told him, why don't you come next time? I'll take you to a few qualified people who are uh, scientists and uh, in the uh, scientific uh, fraternity, they are recognized as uh, you know, great veterans and they looked upon. So when this gentleman came, I took him to one of the finest scientists uh, in this country, um, who then said that I would want my group of scientists to go through this entire thing. And these were people from uh, scientific and industrial research. So after a couple of days of discussion, uh, the gentleman comes back and he says, uh, so you have a magic wand. This is the answer to the problems that we country have. But there came a caveat. He says, you're in India. Change is difficult. So are you there in for it? I said, well, I don't know. This itself is a stunning activity. And uh, it's good to know that there is a solution to a problem. So when there is a solution to a problem, the path should not be very, very tyrannous. Is what I said. So this entire business that we have built in the last 10 years, or rather than the business, it's, it's a family. We don't call ourselves a company. It's an aqua family, which has got a lot of people who join in. And, uh, you know, it's not just uh, employees, but it is a group of uh, common minds with a common objective, coming with multiple competencies, with multiple ideas and multiple innovations. And that's the only way we can address a problem of this monumental uh, proportions. So then I said, uh, let me take the call. And um, then I went to Delhi. And that's where I met uh, Professor Indiresan and uh, Professor Rajan. And all these people were so passionate about what India wanted to. People like Sam Petroda, who, whose heart beats for India always. And these were the people who were, you know, inspirational. I mean, uh, what Sam Petroda built in uh, the early 80s, the STDPC of Boots, giving telephony at one rupee to a common man. That inspired us to give water to a common man at one rupee a litre. And that's when the idea of water ATM and all these things. Are. So there are several other people like this who uh, really inspired us on how to create large scale infrastructures. Way back in 1998, Gadkari built so many flyovers in Bombay. Today, we are blessed with those kind of infrastructure. The Mumbai Pune Expressway is a classic example how, how economy, society, and community can prosper through a concerted action of a visionary translated into reality. So these things were great inspirations for us. And we thought that with these things, there is a reality insight. There is a challenge right now. The path is something which we need to traverse. You need to take a call of whether you want to do that or no. 
So I had a fledgling financial services career, after which I said, uh, you know, if I can do even 0.01% of all these stalwarts what they've done, I think I'll be able to give clean water to 10,000 children, which I think is a great thing in life. So that's how the entire thing started. So the bane of this entire thing was technology. And technology differentiator between the most actively used technology till then and till the beginning of this year, after which uh, I mean, I'll come up to the NGT and Supreme Court um, uh, inferences on this, was reverse osmosis. The reverse osmosis is a brilliant technology at that time. But in a country like us, which is now developing and achieving energy efficiency and energy inclusion, but even then we have got challenges with respect to continuous power. So this technology was the one which required continuous power. When I mean to say continuous power, it required enough pressure of the water to go through a membrane, which is the nucleus of the technology, which would arrest contaminations to make the target water clean. But again, you required an equal amount of water to wash that membrane and those contaminants off before another set of leader comes in. And the con you know, concentrated uh, set of all the contaminations in the backwash would then be put back again in the ground. So what are you doing? You're getting one liter from the ground and putting two liters of contaminated water back in the ground. So while the groundwater table is going down and down, contamination increases, you're augmenting it with further contamination which is coming in, notwithstanding the sludge which is poisonous again, which is not environmental friendly. So we equated this entire thing to the technology which this gentleman, Dr. Timothy Badger, presented to us. And this was evaluated very, very deeply and very seriously with one of the finest uh, minds in our Indian scientific community, who eventually said, not just uh, with respect to uh, treating water in a green way, but also the composition of the treated water, which is again coming back to chemistry. Because if you look at it, the World Health Organization recently had said that reverse osmosis eliminates all the natural minerals which are needed to be there in water. And what comes out is um, water which is bereft of nutrition. And while this happens, uh, it also is very hard on the groundwater and this thing. So this technology which we created uh, was a gravity-based technology. Though it included a huge amount of engineering, but fortunately, Government of India, right since independence, in a bid to provide clean drinking water, in every village has created a borehole and an overhead tank, which has got a head of 24 feet. And from there, the entire water is distributed to the village either at the point or through piping or this thing and the very new initiative of the Honorable Prime Minister and Jal Shakti Ministry of Har Ghar Nal is soon going to be a reality because the basic infrastructure is there. That infrastructure needs to be augmented and that's, I, I mean, that's where, uh, you know, one should commend the vision of Honorable Prime Minister of leveraging what has been done rather than deriding what has already been done. So that gives us even more inspiration. So. Year one, we started this, and then at that point in time, uh, there were uh, three or four missions, the Rajiv Gandhi National Drinking Water Mission, and uh, then there was a Minister of Rural Development Initiative. And what interested us was a program called as Jalmani, to provide clean drinking water systems in schools. Because while we are there, what we are, uh, the next generation is all studying next generation of schools and as Honorable Prime Minister talks about the new India and the demographic dividend that we have, we thought that it's important for us to start building from there. That's when the journey started. But uh, uh, government in their own activities and rightfully so, their public procurement mechanism did not suit evaluating a new technology and get into this activity. So we had a lot of uh, challenges while everybody was convinced, and the one thing with the, you really need to appreciate the entire administrative framework of our country, maybe bureaucracy or the technical engineer framework, their ability to understand and comprehend what is good for the country is amazing. But having said that, they have their own challenges in terms of fitting it into a, a large country like this and needs to follow a process. 
so it takes time so this is what um, you know there are three main uh, contaminants that our country faces today uh, arsenic in the ground water arsenic fluoride and uh, iron notwithstanding bacteria is a all pervasive contaminant all over the place arsenic is a very uh, severe heavy metal found in the eastern and uh, northeastern parts and now it has come to chhattisgarh bihar even parts of maharashtra karnataka uh, because of the rampant uh, digging of borewells uh, arsenic is uh, a contaminant and a heavy metal which is carcinogenic and directly uh, is the cause for cancer and uh, that has been uh, evaluated uh, and uh, that has been really analyzed very strongly the reason for cancer in all these places is arsenic in ground water uh, before all these things i would tell you that 80% of india still their source of drinking water is ground water so fairly a large percentage of this country of the total over 700 districts that we have uh, we've got more than 600 districts which typically have got problems of uh, and these stops western parts uh, have got a contamination called as fluoride and some central parts have got fluoride contamination called as iron iron leads to kidney and ketosis whereas fluoride uh, leads to fluorosis and it completely implodes your skeletal system that means it makes your bones brittle a small fall and you have a definite fracture if not a small fracture so these are all serious public health risks world bank did a major analysis uh, way back in 2000 where they said that communicable diseases which are water borne diseases which are primarily through bacteria which are diarrhea typhoid cholera non diseases which are water borne which are through these kind of contaminants heavy metals fluoride arsenic iron contribute to around 22% of the public health risk of india and if we address these challenges it directly contributes anywhere between 1.5 to 2 percentage points in the gdp so water has a direct effect not just on the public health well being so uh, i'll tell you how it happens because the budgets that are allocated for public health if all these things are taken care of are not needed and those budgets can then be put into long term infrastructure projects or any other projects which will generate uh, productive economic returns and economic yields and that's how it directly contributes to uh, the gdp of the country so water as an elixir has got a very important role in all these places so this first 3 4 years took us immensely to right from assam to kanyakumari and my last count right now is around 1947 villages that have traveled in the last 10 years when we started this in july 2010 uh, till now and that continues even in the covid times uh, uh, sharma ji we are implementing projects in maharashtra gujarat haryana and madhya pradesh uh, so all of them are going to be implemented very shortly commendable so commendable thank you so much sir so we took this technology idea across various um, you know opinion makers opinion builders and even to government decision makers everybody had a view that yes this is something which is good and all this travel showed us that the amount of implementations that have been done in water the only reason for their non sustainability is lack of managing and monitoring it so technology is not an infrastructure it is not a hardware which we realize very strongly and when we set out with technology when we set out with this solution we thought that if we give a drinking water system that will be the end of it then that took us to understand the reasons of non sustainability so now we are talking with a smile but when we did that it was immense amount of challenges tribulations and 100% frustrations every day i don't know what took us ahead it's blessings of people like dr sharma and all the people who have been supporting us is precisely what uh, we are seeing is and, and so what i'm trying to say is that every day was a new challenge but fortunately the drive in us was so hard because we had the solution in the name 
It was not that there's no solution. It was only that path. And everybody has gone through this path. Each and every person whom I described in the beginning, whom I have drawn inspiration from, have gone through this path. And if I go and tell them, then they say, that's your problem. You need to find a way yourself. Otherwise, you go back to a job from nine to five and you get a salary at the end of the month. Be happy with what you have. So what precisely what we did was we then said that, okay, the, it is beyond technology. Beyond technology, then we understood what is the hardware that needs to go. India is a very diverse country as far as climate and demographics is concerned. So what works in Assam will not work in Kutch in Gujarat. What works in Kutch in Gujarat will not work in Kerala. So you have different, different problems. And what works on the shore doesn't work away from the shore. So salinity has got its own challenges. So the multiple factors, so every day gave us a new insight of the challenges that we need to address. By one time, we thought, is this unsurmountable? I'm sorry to use Hindi, it comes naturally. But uh, this is a bloody mole of a headache. How are we going to solve this? Each one of them staring at each other in the middle of the night, not to do what to do. I said, but yes, let's find one by one. And suddenly somebody in the team is over motivated. Who gives us the, you know, the Philip and the adrenaline rush. And that's how it moved. So one way or the other, team is very important. So we've been blessed to have a fantastic team, which is resilient to all these things. And uh, instead of great mentors, great supporters who always, you know, the, the challenge is it's not the need of the money. It's always you need somebody to say that you'll reach there. Just don't leave it. Those two, three words of encouragement and uh, one of our greatest mentors, I mean, I, he doesn't like his name to be taken, but uh, one of the finest gentlemen, human beings in this world I've ever seen, Mr. TNV Ayer, who in the last 10 years has unstintedly supported us through all our challenges and all our tribulations and only said that you're made to win, so you have to win, not for yourself, but for the country and the world. So our business philosophy suddenly became beyond doing a business, a business philosophy became service to nation and service to mankind. By the way, we make money. We have to, because we have to sustain a team. We have to sustain innovation. We have to sustain these things. So the first four to five years went in this. And then came the landmark CSR law in the country, for which now I am blessed to be blessed by Dr. Bhaskar Chatterjee, who is the father of the finest minds who put together a law which was first of its kind in the world. After having studied every law in the US, in the UK, and everything about social responsibility, comes back and he says, this is not going to work. We're going to create something, what India does. And today, India is leading the whole thing. Kudos to Dr. Bhaskar Chatterjee. Fondly call him Bhaskar Dada right now. He's a part of our mentors and one of the strongest supporters of what we do today. So then came a CSR law. Then we said that, well, here we can go to a corporate. Initially, it was voluntary. So when it was voluntary, there was more discretion for people to take it up. But let me remind you historically, all corporates in India who have started in the late 70s and early 80s have been doing CSR on their own, in their own way. Somebody built a school, Tata's, Birla's, and you know, all these people you've seen, the amount of infrastructure that they've created. Kudos to Ratan Tata, four cancer hospitals. It is something, you know, remarkable. it's remarkable. And when in the lockdown, he says, don't give salaries to people, he says that is inhuman. So these are the kind of people whom we have in India. I and mean, we have no dearth of inspiration. No dirt of role models. It's only for us to draw from each one of these people when you face a challenge. So I always put myself in somebody else's shoes and, uh, you know, think. So the classic example was uh, when you don't get consensus, to put yourself in the shoes of P.V. Narsimara. He ran a minority government for five years and did reforms. You put yourself in somebody like Narendra Modi ji's. Swachh Bharat Abhyan, the most impactful global transformational program ever in the world. If not for Swachh Bharat, today COVID, we would have more than 50 million deaths. 
number of toilets which honorable prime minister spoke from redford people ridiculed at that time but because of those toilets we have resilience towards these pandemics so these are multiple kind of things that uh, you know we can relate to i am sorry i am criss crossing uh, with these things but i want to be very natural rather than doing this so then when csr came in we thought that we should be doing something and uh, then a public sector organization like hpcl ye was the opportunity to put a water atm so first of its kind where we built an atm like a cash atm instead of cash it dispensed water and it ran so very well in hospitals and other places it was a very very great remarkable activity so uh, i just missed my initial first uh, installation that we did in 2010 just after we started uh, it was a community system that we had to build in a place called as tara in a village called as uh, in maharashtra in raigad district so this opportunity was given to us by the lions club to be implemented in a social development center called as yusuf mehrali center so yusuf mehrali was a person who actually wrote vande mataram and uh, he, i mean he died very young but it's run by uh, a very eminent set of socialists who do this so we were told to implement a system there and that time he says kya lagaoge aap they were like drinking water system there were 4000 children around in those villages who had serious problems of water problems because there was no clean water and all the water that used to come as rain used to get washed away so then we went there the first time we had to build a system then my uh, colleague dr avinash kadam who was a gold medalist from iit bombay was a technologist he says hum log bana denge daro mat subo so that means he says we'll do it don't worry we didn't have a factory we didn't have anything at that time he says i have a friend near that place who will give us a place to build it so a day before we reach there with some equipment and uh, that guy says no i can't give it to you i said why so there has been an unfortunate incident in my house i said shit what do we do now then he says wait let's go then i went to a nearby garage i told him i need only 2 hours you take whatever money you want that guy says why are you doing this i said we want to give this so that children will be benefited he opened up his garage he says use whatever tools you want but do it we did that next challenge was how we will transport it then we hitch hiked a truck put those things on that both of us reached in the night next morning 10 o'clock was the inauguration whole night we put the system together ourselves painted it made it ready 40 minutes before we started it put the tds meter it worked phenomenally well and sir it was the longest surviving system it survived for 8 years without maintenance and this became a case study so that was the first system artist competition <laughs> thank you sir. so like these step by step we started doing it and uh, you know a lot of people gave us opportunities and csr came into the play we started building models and that's when we understood that beyond filtration technology and the hardware what is needed is community participation until unless community participates in this and takes ownership of operating and maintaining it it is very difficult for you to do it because one of the biggest challenges in these uh, you know mole of challenges that we had seen was if we are doing this every village every place then we have to start a jawar rozgar yojana you will end up you know employing a lot of people when you don't have money to eat for yourself where will you pay others so then we created an entrepreneurship model out of this why i am saying is that everything has led to a every problem has led to a solution which is now finally led to sustainability so then we created this uh, situation so when we started implementing at a few places we did some implementations in rajasthan so when we did implementation in rajasthan so the one gentleman came a very old marwadi gentleman came he told me in pure rajasthani laga to diya apne pani kahan se laoge so i said shit what is this some corporate told me to put it i said why do i get water also so nahi to is par laga ke karoge kya so i said the, we gave that each other he said water has to be there to treat it we thought there was water he said this is a desert there is no water here 
You have to go and fetch water. What these people used to do is, they used to fetch water in water tankers and then put it in a baudi, put a lot of alum into it so that the salinity would then uh, subside down and whatever water was above that, they would drink it. So what I want to say here is that there's innovation and survival. And every village, every state, every activity or every experience that we have had has culminated into an experience which has led to an innovation. Uh -huh. So if you today go and talk to people uh, about treating saline water, they would talk about multiple chemistries and things like this. But it's a, you know, it's a Sasta Sundar Tikau solution. Uh -huh. All you have to do is focus to get alum. And then there was an alum mafia. So every place also has a mafia. Because the need when it is there, when your demand overpowers your supply and inefficiencies and inconsistencies are created in the market infrastructure and the supply chain, automatically is going to give you challenges which you need to find solutions. I said right from basic H2O molecule till finding water, till creating a solution out of that, managing the raw materials to come for that, finding people to use it, finding people to train it, creating that interest alive. He said, shit, what the hell are we doing here? Are we running a country or are we running a business? So every problem, every place had a challenging situation. Another experience, I'm sh uh, sure I'm not going beyond time. Uh, am I? Take your time, take your time. So last experience and then I'll get to the model that we want to do. Uh, last, uh, so one uh, experience like this, we implemented one of uh, very eminent politicians, um, you know, very respected gentleman in Karnataka told me that uh, I'll give you an opportunity, put up a water system. If it works for 30 days properly, then I will pay for it through my local area development fund. So we kept it. As you know, in the country, uh, when you're in a position, it's very difficult for you to meet and this is the last of the problems. So I put that after two, two and a half months, my colleague said, oh, we have just kept it there. There's nothing coming out. So then we went and met him. But it was very difficult to do this. Then finally, my people said that let's take it out. So I said, let me give you a last try. And the gentleman was there in his constituency. But unfortunately, the moment I reached, he had to fly out again. I didn't get the opportunity to meet. But I'd taken my people, they had started dismantling. Sarmaji, an 80 year old lady came to me and she fell at my feet. She showed a pointed a finger to her granddaughter who was pregnant. And another young boy of around six, seven years who had bowed legs. He says, if you take this away, my grandchild will also become like this because there was excessive fluoride there. She says, I will pay you. I said, I don't want any money. I'm leaving it here. Sharma ji, unhone money order karke paise bheje, which whatever they could. And after that, I said, don't give. Even today, if I go to that village, I will get a better reception than anybody else there. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is the goodwill that you generate out of this is amazing. So now coming back to what we are trying to do right now, we've created a model known as Swatch, which is sanitation, and water for community health and hygiene. Because we feel sanitation and water has a direct impact on community health and hygiene. And we have created an all-inclusive model called a Swachagraha, where Swach is sanitation and water for community health and hygiene. And Agra is an invitation to all stakeholders, which includes government, corporates, elected representatives, community, volunteers, students, and academia to come together and build a clean, green, healthy, and new India. So the entire Swachagra is built on the five principles of Atmanirbhar Bharat, of our Honorable Prime Minister. Primarily, first is the economy. The economy of scale is very important. Water should be made accessible to everybody, not free, but completely reasonable. So that is one of the main mantras. BPL will be taken care of by the country, but people above the poverty line have to shell out that little this thing as a commitment and as respect towards water. Second thing is infrastructure. What is needed today, especially after COVID, building a clean drinking water and a sanitation infrastructure has become imperative. Our biggest problem is from in Bombay, 
from marine lines to the Hisar. We have only one community toilet even now. So there is no toilet. If there's a traffic jam, then God save you, which is there almost every day. So that is another activity. Infrastructure is a big challenge. System. We have integrated a whole bunch of IOTs into our filtration system. So that monitoring and sustainability of that is very, very important. And the system also includes education, educating people around doing this whole thing. Demography. Demography is one of the finest things that India has today. We have more than 70% who are a young population, raring to go, innovating. I mean, uh, the Atal Innovation Mission is doing one fantastic job under the leadership of my friend Ramananji, who has not only inculcated the sense of innovation, but also taken it to schools right at the grassroots level, where they are sensitizing these people, the need to innovate and the need to go beyond that entire activity. Demand is unlimited. Demand overpowers the supply. And now coming to the entire activity of our business model, our business model is known as AQUAS. A-Q-U-A-S. A is access. And for access, there are only two sources of water that we have. Rainwater and seawater. These are only two sources of water. We need to leverage these things. Second is quality. The quality of water is very important. It has to be portable so that it doesn't uh, end up into any contamination. Judicious use, usage, so that you don't waste water, you don't, you know, disrespect water. Then comes the administration, managing the entire water cycle and the water infrastructure, which is very important, leading to sustainability. Those, these are the five elements of aquas that we are proliferating very strongly. While we are doing all these activities, we have a joint and R&D partnership uh, along with the Institute of Chemical Technology, erstwhile known as the prestigious UDCT, where we are identifying solutions and alternates to create uh, uh, you know, desalination plants without using reverse osmosis and using green technologies. Because these are the only two sources of water we have. Subsequently, what we're trying to tell, while we are building this activity, we are also making representations for educating people, which you rightly said. Education has to be at multiple levels. It has to be at school levels, it has to be at vocational levels, and it has to be at postgraduate levels. So we have created the Center for Innovation, Sustainability, and Social Entrepreneurship, along with the HSNC University in Mumbai. And uh, we are partnering with the Maharashtra University of Health Sciences, where we have created India's first COVID response and resilience-oriented skill building initiative called as SWACH. It's a three-month course which teaches you the basics of sanitation, sewage management, rainwater harvesting, groundwater recharging, plumbing, water quality management, community health as in terms of nutrition, menstrual hygiene, societal norms, and waste management in terms of solid waste management. So we feel that all these elements of SWATCH augment the basic human development index of a particular individual. And especially post-COVID, it is our view and the government of Maharashtra is exploring that, is that every village should have two Swatch Bandhus and two Swatch Vaginis as custodians of Swatch assets and the interface between the community and the administration to implement the advisories at the same time monitor the entire assets together. So, and these people we are proposing to get them enabled into, um, um, enrolled into the Manariga or the NRLM. And eventually, these people will be qualified under PMEGP to implement drinking water systems, toilets, and generate revenue out of it and create livelihood for themselves. So it's an all-inclusive model which not only enables, uh, you know, SDG 6 and SDG 5, but enables 12 out of the 17 um, SDG goals. Coming to the uh, initiative that my daughter did of Khadi masks. So she came back from Canada. Uh, she went to study there last year. She came back this uh, March uh, in the pandemic and she saw there was no mass available. So we come from a place called as Dharwad, which is the Khadi capital of India and a lot of Indian flags which are flying very proudly high on all our institutions are hand woven, hand spun there. So she created a Khadi mask and showed it to a few doctors. They said this is good. Eventually ICMR also said that plain face mask needs to be used. 
and now it is turned out that it is the only reusable sustainable and breathing mask with full respect to prime minister modi ji uh, enlivening the vision of mahatma gandhi ji and the spirit of uh, freedom is absolutely going across we have given it to indian army we have given it to mumbai police and various other places this thadi mask requires only 3 liters to produce whereas the normal cloth requires 55 liters to produce so every initiative that we do is focused on optimizing the use of water to save water watershed management is very important going forward we are telling corporates not just to do rain water harvesting and ground water recharging each corporate each community each individual has the responsibility to produce water for the next generation that's when we have built a concept of a water bank where areas which have got less water can borrow water from areas which have got more water and this will be transported through indian railways with a commitment that they will do watershed management in 3 years become water positive if not they have to pay for that water so replacing currency with water we are planning to build a nationwide clearing and monitoring infrastructure of water with a aim to give equality and right to water to every citizen of india jai hind sir great great doctor sir what a pleasure what a pleasure doctor uh, kusnu sahab it came right from the heart and it came right from the soul and it was not a communication it was connecting and there was so much to learn so much to pick up and all the uh, difficulties and all the challenges and whatever you took up that shows the true entrepreneurship uh, and 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 a great uh, kind of inspiration for the younger generation our deepest regards and uh, great blessings to your daughter as well for Thank her you. venture and uh, there's so much to share maybe subsequently we will be taking up one more session with you where we will come up uh, could you be kind enough to share your website with us if you can just yes, can i share it here sure okay. sure just give me the please if you have got the direct access yeah have let got me, the direct access let me just uh, it will be nice if you share your website yeah, yeah. so that the audience world over because a lot of people are asking me in the facebook i was just seeing that what exactly is dr sub's website so it would help us a lot if you can just share it so that the people can uh so one second no no take your time take your time so can you see it sir yes it is there yeah. but website has yet to come that yeah, yeah. Uh, yes the website is come access to clean water is a divine right we want it to be uh, the 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 right forever yes now where exactly is the website yes it has come yes it is aquacraft.net right. oh, okay because what is quickly take you to the products yeah if you have a five minutes sure sure so just quickly before that the team i'll just introduce you to my team very quickly so these have been with us right from our journey okay and uh, the combination of people from iit from nit udct uh, the tata institute of social sciences as well as uh, shridhar and me who are directors we are all bankers and financial services people okay and then we have mentors bhaskar da yes. uh, dr rai professor nalapat Timothy Badger is the gentleman who gave us the technology. Okay. And Rani Desai ji, she is ex-Deloitte, and Jack Sim, who is the promoter of the World uh, Toilet Organization. You were telling that. Yes. Jack Sim. Okay. Great. So, Great. This is a community drinking water system, sir. Okay. Robert this is fifteen thousand liters per day of uh -huh. clean drinking water, uh -huh. which services more than three thousand people in a particular village. okay and this sustains at least for 7 years if not more okay and with very limited maintenance no requirement of power just in case of dispensation if we have to use uh, you know some sort of a atm machine 
that's where the power is acquired but the process of filtration does not require power at all okay this is a water atm which gives water at 1 rupee per liter and we've implemented it across public infrastructures in bus stations and railway stations okay and across uh, the country at present how many water yes. atms are there so, so we have 79 of them right now 79 of okay. 79 of them so this is our newest innovation sir our community bio toilet okay and this is what we are now planning to convert it with another uh, the drinking water system and create what is known as the jana suvidha kendra okay so we put a toilet so this toilet does not require water okay it requires water only for uh, washing oneself okay it does not require water for uh, flushing okay. it does not require water for treatment the fecal matter gets implored through a bacterial process gets converted into liquid fertilizer and flows down into the ground that is why the plants next to it okay because we want to make sanitation as a destination of pleasure rather than distress yes yes and that is essentially what we want to accord pull this thing and if you see the small thing on the right hand side where the human uh, this thing has been kept yeah. so that is a place for women to change out okay and if they want to you know use sanitary pads or so on and so forth and it's also got a dispenser uh, for putting biodegradable sanitary pads which automatically get uh, you know degraded within 24 hours of putting it into the ground wow another innovation that we have done wow. sir everything that we do is green and environmental friendly okay green and environment friendly wow yes. this is the latest covid response initiative okay where it's a combination of a water atm and a hand washing station okay so hand washing station is also contactless it is foot pedal based a typical hand wash takes around 8 liters of water ha huh. our hand wash requires 1 and 1/2 liters of water okay and after washing the soap water gets treated again through a bacterial process ready to use and recycled back Wow! Wow! Water ATM that we also have does not waste water, does not require power, no sludge. So this is a complete water positive activity, and we've called it being swatch. Being and swatch. Independence Day, we launched a mobile app. Okay. Called as Being Swatch, which we'll be now putting it on the website. The whole idea there is the government has done a lot of uh, fantastic work in pandemic control. Uh. Corporates have contributed immensely. non profits are given sugar to the poor what have you done uh, now your responsibility and commitment towards stay clean and be swatch okay. so you download this app take a pledge and the app also allows you to report places who are not uh, following the advisories like people who are not wearing masks people who are not maintaining social distances if there is a lot of uh, garbage around people are wasting water with this we want to populate an entire community of conscious and responsible users mm -hmm. who not only keep themselves and their family safe but the country safe as well wow wow so we've used digital initiatives we've used technology we've used hardware we used societal activities finally our idea is democratizing basics for the people of the people by the people we only remain catalysts great great so these are some things which we've done this is the khadi kawach and khadi kawaj is the first uh, face in khadi face mask in india and we are uh, generating employment for over 200 women self help groups back in dharwad mm -hmm. who are manufacturing these activities every initiative that we do under swachh every element is livelihood enabled look towards creating empowerment and create livelihood specifically towards women great right. and we are implementing a major program as i told you earlier for schools where we are providing this being swatch platforms we are giving uh, you know, khadi face masks and we will be giving biodegradable sanitary pads and we will be giving clean drinking water systems and toilets so the whole idea is that our focus is the new india and the next generation our major focus in our intervention in aquacraft 2.0 which we call um, from uh, this july 22nd we completed 10 years the next 10 years we are going to dedicating in taking india high up on the sustainability map and enliven every initiative 
that has been rolled out by the honorable prime minister and our motto is swachh bharat sach hoga wow <laughs> <laughs> thank you great great such a wonderful such a wonderful initiatives such a creative work so many initiatives uh we wish you all the best we wish you all the best to your entire team and particularly your app which you have launched our great 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 regards to you on that and best wishes on the that and being swatch wow that's great <laughs> that's great and it's all about swatch uh, <laughs> great great and particularly those toilets what you have shown where uh, you don't require water for any other purpose than just to wash yourself i mean this is remarkable remarkable initiative doctor we are proud of you thank you very much uh, dr uh, subramanya ji coming this afternoon sharing your thought process with us sharing your vision with us and what all your organization is doing commendable thank you for sharing all that it's such a such a great initiative we are so grateful to you thank you very much we look forward to uh, many more such occasion where we are together and we help the global community the best possible way and while empowering while equipping while encouraging and while bringing the awareness how to save every drop of water thank, thank you doctor thank, thank you. you just parting ways i just want to say one thing yes we are make in india and service the world jai hind make in india and service the world yes well taken well taken thank you doctor <laughs>